Folks, thanks a lot for the 70,000 subscribers, you guys are awesome. But we're not stopping here, let's push it folks to 100,000 subscribers. So give that support to the channel and subscribe and hit that like button down below to reach our goal of 153 likes. And now let's go for it. In a world terrorized by the dreaded kaiju, just like the entire national territory, the great city of Yokohama is protected by the Japan Self-Defense Force, and as soon as a fighter receives the order to proceed with their mission, a gigantic creature emerges from under the water to attack a bridge. The impact creates a wave that hits the sidewalk, and at the same instant, the kaiju emergency alert sounds, so all citizens are evacuated to an underground shelter as the huge monster heads from Yadabashi to Yamashita. At this moment, it's reported to the activated units of the Defense Force that the estimated length of the kaiju is 60 meters and its power level is 3.5. Intelligence warns that nothing has been identified on thermal sensors within a three-mile radius, so the units are given permission to open fire on the target. Following the news reports, a group of friends assumes that the 3rd Division has been dispatched, since they are in Yokohama. From the combat helicopter, a unit jumps toward the cover of a building to reach a strategic position, while the kaiju knocks down everything in its path. Infantry units are deployed to the front lines to engage the enemy up close and cause a distraction, and the huge monster struggles against opponents so small and agile. In no time, the strategic unit finds the perfect spot to fire an explosive projectile at the kaiju's chest, causing its torso to explode, resulting in a gruesome rain of blood. After the kaiju extraction machinery arrives, a man enjoys a delicious burger, inspired by the scene of guts scattered across Yokohama. Although it seems like quite a mess, the man is a member of the cleaning crew responsible for these creatures, so there remains mean another hefty dose of overtime pay. Meanwhile, the population applauds the talented members of the 3rd Division, who once again control the danger without suffering any casualties. Led by Captain Ashiro, the group has reached the status of Yokohama heroes and are recognized as the true guardians of the citizens against the kaiju threat. In the midst of the parade after this victory, the humble janitor seems lost among the ecstatic crowd. After all, Kaka Hibina was gearing up for his own battle, one that begins outside the media spotlight and the cheers of the crowd. Serving Azumotech in addition to cleaning, his team is tasked with collecting a sample of the slain kaiju, so Kaka requests a heat chainsaw to cut the fat stuck to the monster's jaw. Suddenly, one of the kaiju's organs explodes, causing a workplace accident and inflicting a serious burn on a worker's leg. According to Kafka, whenever the 3rd Division springs into action, they leave behind this mess, making it difficult to distinguish which organs might be dangerous. However, that's not the only problem to be considered, considering that the cleaning crew has been ordered to finish the job by the end of the weekend, even though the 60-meter creature has left the sea dirty for miles around. As if that weren't enough, Kafka is assigned to clean the intestines due to a lack of a worker, and let's just say that's not the most pleasant part of the body to work on, if you consider what is produced in that region. According to legend at Azumo Tech, the worker sent to the intestines always goes for a long time without being able to eat, due to the nature of this inconvenient service. Arriving home, Kafa is exhausted after the heavy shift, and to make matters worse, he can still smell the animal's feces burning in his nostrils, so he blows his nose as if trying to force the stench out. Behind him, the TV highlights the heroic actions of the 3rd Division of the Defense Force and its young leader, Mina Ashiro, who not only attained the rank of captain at 27, but also has hundreds of slain kaiju to her credit. Watching the report, Kaka remembers when he promised alongside Mina that they would exterminate the kaiju together, but his smoker's lung is living proof that time has passed, along with his childish ambitions. Upon turning off the television and seeing his reflection on the screen, Kaka wonders how he ended up there, but just a brief thought about his current life situation makes the young man lose his calm. In the end, he content himself with performing an important service for society, which provided him with a decent roof over his head where he can live, because according to him, that's good enough. However, as he headed to work the next day, Kaka couldn't stop thinking about yesterday's report, and when he arrives at the service headquarters, he is introduced to a new Izumo Tech employee named Rino Ichikawa. The young man begins an internship today with the others, but according to Toku, he only thinks about joining the Defense Force as soon as he gets the chance. Toku tells the newcomer that Kaka also had this dream, but he's still the star cleaner of Yokohama to this day. Taking the teasing seriously, Ichikawa asks why Kafka gave up, and although this subject stirs great resentment in the man, he hides his frustration by answering that he did his best, but as you grow up, you understand that not every dream comes true. However, Ichikawa would rather die than accept the end of this dream, so giving up is not an option for him. With that said, he leaves to put on his work uniform, and Kafka hated having come across a young man who has the same ambition he had, but with a flame that has long since extinguished for him. 
During a shift, Mike's team is tasked with cleaning the bones while Yoshimura's team must start partitioning the kaiju's legs. When the rookie was sent to the intestines, Kaka thinks he got rid of another knight with the smell of sewage, but his luck was still low at that point, so he's sent there for the second consecutive day. At break time, Ichiko can't keep up the tough guy act after the ordeal of the intestines and Kaka tries to laugh at the newbie's nausea, but he himself needs to be careful not to throw up. Since the boy couldn't eat, Kaka gives him a liquid multivitamin to tank the rest of the rough afternoon of work, as well as nasal plugs so he won't come home wanting to stick his nose in a bucket of disinfectant. However, since the veteran was coarse because of the protection, Ichikawa didn't understand anything he said, so Kafe found himself obliged to teach the intern to protect himself through sheer ignorance. After the break, the two resumed their dreaded task of dealing with the kaiju's intestines until sunset, when some colleagues bid farewell as they finished the day's work. Kaka at least rejoiced in having finished the foulest part of the kaiju, and the newcomer Reno Ichikawa, seizing the brief moment of rest, took the opportunity to thank his colleague for helping him get through his first day at the company. Additionally, before leaving, the intern informed the veteran that the Defense Force had raised the age limit for enrollment to 32 years. Therefore, Ichikawa knows that he doesn't want to meddle in other people's lives, but he recalls the bitterness in Kaka's expression when he talked about giving up earlier. In light of this, the man comments that Ichikawa is cooler than he had imagined. But just as the young man was about to return to his cold and calculating demeanor, a kaiju emerges and attacks him. In a reflex, Kaka saves his companion from the monster's jaws, and in another attempt by the kaiju to attack, once again the young man is saved by his co-worker. Then Kaka tells Ichikawa to run and get help. But with the boy's reluctance to leave his friend, Kaka reminds him that the boy won't be able to join the defense force if he's buried seven feet underground. With Ishikawa's departure, the remaining man lures the creature towards himself and runs as fast as he can until he finds a steep opening where the kaiju can't pass. Continuing to run down the corridor, Kaka crosses the gallery until he jumps out of the window on the other side. At that moment, memories of childhood with Mina emerge, where he tells his inconsolable friend that the kaiju destroyed the school where they studied in their homes so little Kaka regrets not having killed the Guruman. Mina criticizes her friend for only caring about this in these circumstances after all, Miko, her tabby cat, died at the hands of that demon. Therefore, they both declare at the same time that they will join the defense force, and Kaka challenges Mina to see who will be the cooler officer first, so they can fight together against the kaiju threat. However, the man found himself alone facing this grotesque creature, and upon finding an iron bar on the ground, he tries to confront the kaiju and his frustration for not being in the defense force. But the enemy's strength and speed are overwhelming, so soon the human is thrown into the air wondering once again how he ended up there. Mercilessly, the kaiju steps on him and prepares to make him his meal, unable to fight for his life anymore. However, Ichikawa delays the monster's dinner by hitting it with a traffic sign, while announcing that he has called for reinforcements. Even without being able to react, Kaka criticizes his companion's decision to return, but Ichikawa wouldn't see himself as a worthy member of the defense force if he simply left his comrade to die. Hearing that, Kaka remembers when he was eliminated in the test to join the anti-kaiju force, and now there he was weakened to the point of leaving his partner fighting alone against a monster of this magnitude. Faced with reality, Kaka accepts that he is not capable of protecting his co-worker, just as he didn't even save his friend's tabby cat. Still, there was someone capable of doing so, and through her white tiger and her rifle, Mina Ashiro adds another kaiju to her portfolio in a few seconds, before ordering some subordinates to start the rescue operation while she personally checks for the presence of other yoju in the area with her team. When hospitalized, Kaka reflects on how Mwena took down that monster in a few seconds, so he's eating dust in the challenge they agreed upon. Tachikawa startles him by drawing his attention and remarks that he wouldn't be alive if it weren't for him. So Kaka is also a cool guy. As soon as he hears that word, the man is thrown back to when he bet with his friend about who would be the coolest officer first. Tachikawa says again that Kaka should try to join the defense force, and this time, Kaka himself acknowledges that there's no point in pretending to himself that he's left that goal behind. He recognizes that giving up is part of life, but lying to oneself is the worst thing one could do. Therefore, he commits to giving himself another chance. However, a small winged kaiju that was lurking claims to have found its target, and then enters the man's mouth causing a hideous reaction that affects his entire body. Ichikawa goes to see what's happening, and when he opens the curtain separating them, Kaka had assumed a diabolical form. Seeing himself in the window, the monster panics alongside his friend, while an old man passing through the corridor sees the scene and pulls out his cell phone to report the presence of another kaiju. Hey folks, we're kicking off the new anime season, and if you enjoyed this anime and want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We need your support to reach our goal of 70,000 subscribers. 
Every subscription counts and helps us grow our community. Catch you next time.